What's going on, everybody? It's Jeff here. Welcome back to the channel. All right, there are two important things that we need to talk about. Scenarios that we were preparing for over the last couple months have vastly changed very quickly. I'm going to break everything down for you. Let's get right into it. First off, one thing that I want to mention, we have been preparing for the interest rate hikes in order to combat inflation. Now, there's a couple things that have gone on over the past few months. It's been the number of rate rate hikes, how quickly they're going to, you know, uh, raise interest rates and as well as what is the balance sheet, you know, uh tapering going to look like? How how quickly are they going to sell off some of their uh assets and when that time frame of when it was going to begin? However, things have vastly derailed from the Fed's plans because of everything that is happening over in Russia and Ukraine. And for the short term, there might be some positive catalysts. However, for the long term, I really think we are in a position that we are not going to be able to get out of very cleanly. And it almost gives me feels from what I hear and read back that happened in the late 70s and 80s. I was not around for that. I was born in 89. All right. But everything that I hear from individuals that are older than me and I read, it kind of is giving me a little bit of that vibe happening today. So let's talk about it. Powell testified before the House and the Senate last week, and he had stated that the Fed is poised to hike interest rates to fight inflation despite the Ukraine war. However, check out what he said. He said he is going to propose a quarter point hike rather than a half point. Now, analysts and investors were pretty much close to 100% banking on a half point raise and there were some about a 60% that was stating potentially a three quarter point raise that would kick it off very quickly to try to combat some of this inflation that we have begun to know is not transitory and has got a little rampant. So Powell and the Fed raising interest rates a quarter of a point isn't really going to do anything to combat inflation. Now here is where things change up a little bit. Inflation is only going to exponentially rise at a rapid rate. The CPI numbers come out March. They're not even going to be factored in the amount of increase that has occurred over the past few weeks. And if there's any bit of shock happening, it is really going to shock the markets. Now, a little bit of good news on interest rates staying low is that it could give the market a little bit of a bounce. The reason being is because low interest rates is positive for the market, especially the tech sector, which is evaluated off of future revenue. But let's talk about that second part and why I think that inflation is just going to continue to run rampant. So crude oil had reached $115 a barrel. Analysts are seeing this anywhere between $130 and $150. Couple that with the United States government talking about cutting their Russian oil imports because of everything that has obviously happened and including energy in their sanctions. Here's where things change. You can see the news articles everywhere. I literally filled up where I live in Connecticut about a week ago the price I paid was $3.59. I got some gas on my way to the office and paid $4.49. That is almost a dollar increase in seven or eight days. And if they do stop importing from Russia without serious you know, uh, increase from where we are in the United States, the price is only going to go even higher. Elon Musk had even tweeted, okay, hate to say it, but we need to increase oil and gas output immediately. Extraordinary times demand extraordinary measures. And here's the thing. It's not going to be instantaneous. And like he says right here, sustainable energy solutions cannot react instantaneous to make up for Russian oil, but our increase in oil and gas output can, it will not be able to combat at least in the short term. And I'm talking about the next one to two weeks going on to about one to two months. If we can increase that output, yes, it will help combat some of the prices, but here's the thing. Okay, and this is where I talk about inflation is oil and gas is always the first thing to rise. Once some of these companies who are transporting goods and all the stores that we buy everything at, okay, and especially all of our at home deliveries from Amazon, it's all transported by vehicles which burn oil and gas. 
they are the next ones to be able to raise their prices to offset their, their costs. This is only the first thing. So my point behind all of this is you have the Fed that is not even really going to raise interest rates at all because a quarter of a point is next to nothing in the short term that could give the market a little bit of a bounce. However, the can being kicked down the road, okay, is really getting kicked down the road. And if we do get to a position to where this cannot be resolved very shortly, the only way out of this is going to be heading into a recession. Now, one last thing I will give you because we've been covering it for a long period of time. If you look at the VIX over the last 30 days, it's been hovering around this $28 price range. It dipped down to about 20 after the spike in January. Once we heard about the Russia invading Ukraine, it's been hanging out above 30. That is one reason why option premiums are running a little bit slower. We are still getting some 50, 60, even over 100% movers on our options pick every single morning. However, premiums do move a little bit slower, and that is because when the fear and volatility is high, our IV is high. Last thing I do want to point out, because I know I've covered it for a long for quite some time is the SPY, where we stand on that W formation. Now the formation has gotten a little bit choppy. We did make a lower low right now. If we do stay curled around, that will be another lower high. You do see this descending channel channel uh, starting to kind of form on the SPY. We did reject off of the 200 moving average. The 50 has not crossed the 200. That did happen over in the QQQ, which is a NASDAQ ETF known as death cross. That's why we got those two big sell-offs on the QQQ. However, if, like I said, if they do say on, you know, in March, they're only going to raise a quarter point, which is what Powell's shooting for. You could see a little bit of a spike happening. But like I said, now it's changed a little bit from that short to midterm, okay, of a little bit of a pullback to now a, probably more of a longer term pullback. So kind of let all of this sink in. I know it might have been a lot. I'm going to continue to go over it and monitor it. I just kind of wanted to share this with everybody because it was literally like a double catalyst that is completely derailed everyone's forecast for the next few months. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. I'll see you in the next one.